YouTube, my name is Amber and welcome back to my blog. So before I get started on this week's topic, um, I'm going to jump straight into the weekly update on my weight because it's gotten better, like legit better. In terms of my goals, um, I have been sleeping fairly well. I've gotten at least six hours of sleep every night, if not a little bit more with like taking a nap. Um, so that's been really, really great for me. And then um, I recently purchased a new water bottle, you guys. This thing is 48 ounces. Yeah, 48 ounces. And I go through about two to three of those a day. So I am doing so perfect on my water intake, making sure that I'm well hydrated. The only thing that's not going so well, it, which I'm sure everybody has seen, is the whole not working out kind of thing. But I have, like I said in the last episode, I've been picking up extra shifts at work and part of it's like backroom stuff. So it's picking up heavy boxes, um, moving them around, packing things, a lot of just manual labor. And that has actually done a good job for me um, because I am down to 218.5, which is like a pound and a half. So yay me, good job me. Um, so I mean this, I feel like this should say to anybody that any amount of like physical energy or physical work that you do is bound to positively impact you. The only problem now is my hip is hurting again. Like I can't even walk around the house without me being like <laughs> So I am thinking that I'm probably gonna start working a little bit on like my my abs, my core strength basically, and my back strength. Cause I wonder if that might be one of the reasons why my hip is so weak and just all around bleh in terms of being able to do stuff. So if you guys have any helpful like core strengthening tips or back strengthening tips that you could give me, that'd be super duper awesome. Um, okay, so now we're gonna jump into the topic of this week, which as I mentioned like three weeks ago, is gonna be sexuality. And I was actually reading one of my favorite series um, just earlier today. I started reading this series back when I was like in high school. So the story is I borrowed this series from my ex and Initially, I got into it because it was vampires, and I was just like, oh my god, vampires. And then it started becoming more about um, the main character developing her identity and her strength and developing her sexuality based on her interactions around her. And for me at the time, in high school, being that good little Catholic girl that I was, I was like, what the hell is this? Who does that? Like, who, who goes around with this many people at one time? Who wants to do that? So I think that's probably what got me out of reading the series is just the amount of sexual content and the intimacy of the sexual relationships and the nature of them and then the, the nonchalance, the, and the nonchalant nature of how she interacts with these people that she's involved with. It kind of struck me as like foreign and almost intimidating and repulsive and me being the person I am now having lived you know eight years past that now I'm rereading it and I'm like wow this is really just intricate and amazing and me being the person I am now having accepted my own sexuality and having come to learn more about other people and what they want and what they desire and how they interact with other people it's changed a lot about how I've seen this series and a lot about how I am reinterpreting the character. So if you guys want to read it, I can leave a link down um, in the description below so you can go check it out on Amazon if you want to buy it. So I think I make it a very good point whenever I'm talking about really broad topics like things like sexuality um, that I establish that I am not a professional of anything. I might be maybe a professional at like eating my feelings, but anything else concerning other people and not just myself. I can't make blanket statements. I can only talk about what I do know and what I have been told by other people from their perspective. So if you want to know all about every single sexuality that exists, um, there's something called the internet. You're on it right now and you're more than welcome to do a quick Google search and go on Wikipedia and just read up on that and that'll give you a good basis to start. But what I can talk about is being a queer woman and experiencing what I've experienced over time. So I thought for the longest time that I was completely heterosexual. I thought that any interactions that I had with women were just 
women things and that it was acceptable because I was a woman and that's what society teaches me. That any affection I show for another woman is simply because I'm a woman and that's why it's okay. I didn't start thinking that I was maybe sexually attracted to other women until I was in high school and I became friends with my ex. And I'm pretty sure that we danced around each other for like three years. Um, like we would kiss and we would like, you know, play truth or dare with all our friends at parties and it wasn't a big deal for me because I just assumed that I'm a woman. If I kiss another woman, nobody cares. I mean, as long as I'm not like dating her or I'm not actually sleeping with her, no one's going to put a label on me other than straight. So I continued my high school career pretty much like that until I was a senior and I thought, whoa, hey, maybe I do have feelings for this woman and I should say something to her. For some people, when it's interacting with the same gender or the opposite gender um, or another gender, that in and of itself can determine what you find attractive. That one interaction with that one person can be like a, whoa, hey, there's something I didn't think of before. For me, I didn't think in that way. I was raised Catholic. I thought that I was going to grow up and get married to a man and have lots of babies and deal with, you know, traditional gender stereotypes and gender roles then. And that was how I thought life was going to go. So we did break up uh, close to the end of my senior year. And it was because I was afraid that there were people in my life who would find out about it and would disapprove and would treat me as they felt necessary. Um, in order to punish me for how I felt about another woman. So I broke up with my girlfriend. She will never let me live that down. But for me, I don't even think I can let myself live that down because I would never let, I would never tell a friend who was with somebody of the same gender or somebody of a, who didn't have um, a, a traditional gender that they should be afraid of somebody disapproving of their love or this person that they have affection for. And I am very bad at taking my own advice. But again, I was a little 17 year old kid. I didn't know any better. So for me, in order to remove myself from a position of vulnerability and to remove the possibility of someone disapproving of what I was doing, I got myself out of there. And I decided then, I think probably, that I should maybe think more seriously about who I was and what exactly it was to be attracted to, you know, the person that I, and what it was to be attracted to somebody who I hadn't thought I would be attracted to. So I spent my first couple of years in college not experimenting, but watching and listening and being aware of what other people said. I don't think I ever really established myself as being bisexual um, until I was about a sophomore in college. And by then it was because I'd had friends who were very open about talking about, oh yeah, I've been with women and I've been with men and I'm attracted to both of them and it's not a big deal. And that was a really, really hard thing for me in my head to overcome. And me and how I was raised and my own prejudices in my head to wrap around. Because like I said, I'd always thought I'd grow up with this heteronormative lifestyle and that was the end of it. I used to have dreams about coming home to a man in a suit and two kids in a giant house and I didn't think beyond that. I don't think it was until I moved away from home and moved to university that I actually took the time to research and learn and investigate how much farther sexuality spreads from what I had grown up knowing. There was a time where I legitimately thought that I was asexual, which means somebody who has absolutely no desire for sex. You don't experience sexual attraction. I thought that I was potentially asexual because I would see these people around me and they were gorgeous as all hell and they wanted to flirt with me. And I was like, oh yes, attention. But I had no desire beyond having that attention on me. I didn't want to form any other bond with them aside from that instant. So I spent probably a good six months to a year and a half thinking that I was asexual and that definitely had its own 
um, troubles. The thing about asexuality is people are very quick to determine that it's not possible to exist without sex. So telling somebody that I was struggling with my sexuality and I had no idea what was going on and hey, maybe I don't want to ever have sex because it's not important and I'm just not into it. That actually caused a lot more concern from people than anything else I could have said, I think. At least if I had said that I was lesbian or if I had said that I was pansexual or bisexual, they would have been like, okay, I can work with that. But for whatever reason, asexuality comes off to people as like, a rejection of everything that is intricate to relationships. So for me to come to a realization that I am demisexual, that I will be attracted or could be attracted to any person who is aesthetically pleasing to me and that that doesn't immediately have to connect to sex was one of the most relief filled moments of my life because I've always felt this pressure to just follow along with what I've grown up with. I'm supposed to want these things. I'm supposed to just go with what people have told me. I'm supposed to follow these stories and these steps and get to that point eventually. And that's what everybody does. And that may be true for some people. You know, maybe you are destined to meet someone of the op of a, the opposite gender and go out there and have a couple dates and have sex on the first date or have sex on the third date because that's the rule and then, you know, marry them down the road and have kids and all the whole shebang. And for me to finally decide that that's maybe not what I want, that even though I've had these dreams and these ideas in my head for so long, that maybe that isn't where I'm going, that has been a really life-changing thing for me. Sexuality is more than just sex. It's more than just how you feel sexual arousal for somebody else or don't feel sexual arousal for somebody else. It's something that is integral to people themselves, but it's not something that you have to force to develop or to identify or to, to cultivate in order to have an idea or in order to come to an end where it can be understood for all. If it takes you time to understand what your sexuality is like and how that affects your relationships and whether that will affect your relationships or not. That's your choice alone and nobody else can stand there and tell you, well, it's not real. You can't really do this. You can't really be attracted to this many people at once. You can't really not be attracted to somebody. One of the best parts about rereading this series is coming full circle from being that person in high school who rejected anything and everything that wasn't a heteronormative monogamous lifestyle to being the person I am now who has become more knowledgeable about people and relationships not only through my own experiences but from being open to listening and interpreting what other people have said. So with that lot of lot of knowledge in your heads now um, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. So I hope you guys are having a good week. I hope you're being kind to yourselves. I hope that any of the mumbo jumbo that just spilled out of my mouth, you know, made a little bit of sense to you. Many of you guys are interested in reading the series that I'm talking about that I don't want to mention by name because I don't want to have to worry about copyright things or whatever crazy thing is happening with YouTube right now where if you mention anything, someone's going to come up on you and like slap you with something that'll take away your channel. I have a baby channel. I don't need that yet. So yeah, I'll leave it for you down in the description below. Um, I'll leave a Wikipedia link. I'll leave an Amazon link if you want to go ahead and buy the books. They are definitely worth like reading through. They are wonderful and amazing. And honestly, you get through them pretty fast. I think I read about five or six of them in the past five days. Yay for reading. So yeah, um, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.